Hello there everyone, Almighty Zentaco here. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to do a simple lighting effect in Click Team Fusion. Um, I already have a platformer, a simple platformer here uh, as the basics for this, just to kind of show off how this engine would work. But you can apply this lighting effect to any sort of engine at all. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be a platformer. So <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is click on this Layers toolbar. We're going to need to add a new layer. So click New Layer. Now keep in mind Layer 2 is going to be above Layer 1. Uh, layer 1 will be where we're, we're going to put things that interact with the, uh, the player and things like that. But Layer 2 is going to be our lighting layer. So what we're going to need to do is make sure Layer 2 is selected. We're going to insert an active object. We're going to rename this object to Darkness. And we are going to change this to a white block. Now you would think this should be black, but it needs to be white because we're going to be doing a, sub a subtraction. So go ahead and throw this at the top left, and we're going to resize this. Whoops, we're going to need to resize this to be the size of our viewport. We want it to cover the screen at all times. Okay, now um, under the properties for this object, we want to make sure we uh, uncheck follow the frame. This will allow the object to move alongside with the viewport instead of just staying in place. Now another thing we need to do is add lighting so <clears throat> or a light source. This is going to be an active object so create one now and call it light source. Um, and now all this needs to be is a black shape. Um, that in it, whatever the shape is, it's going to subtract from the white. And so the white is going to obscure the screen and this object is going to reveal part of the screen, essentially making it look like a light source. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to use um, Inkscape to create it. I've actually already done that here, but I'll show you how to do that. Um, so that it's blurry and has a, a sort of uh, circular blur effect. So all I'm gonna do is Inkscape. I'm going to make a black circle in Inkscape and I am going to select Radial Gradient and I'm going to add a blur effect. That's all I'm going to do. That is my light source. Now I'm going to export this. Okay. Now I'm going to import that graphic. But yeah, if you make it a gradient, it looks a lot better. If you just have a, a, a solid circle, uh, the light will go so far and then it'll simply just stop. Okay, now this light source... No, that's actually pretty good. That's a pretty good size. <clears throat> um, Alright, so now to make this work, we need to uh, fe uh, mess with the layer property. So click on layer 2 and we're going to go under effects and where it says none, select edit under standard select subtract now that should have worked basically let's find out yep okay so now we have a, a area that's lit and an area that's not but we're going to do some more stuff to make this look a little bit better i'm actually going to shrink this a tad okay first thing we're going to do is i want the darkness to be semi-transparent not fully opaque so i'm going to add a value and name it trans and we are always going to set the semi-transparency of the darkness object to equal trans. So under always here, uh, we are going to select the darkness object. And under effects, compatibility, set semi-transparency to the value of trans, which we're going to grab from the darkness object. And uh, you can set, change this trans value before runtime or at runtime. I'm going to make it 15 for now. I think that'll probably look pretty good. Yeah. I'm liking that. Okay, now uh, light sources have to come from somewhere, so we're going to create a graphic to represent our light bulb. And we're going to make this flicker. So all we need to do is make sure this is at the center there. Uh, now we're going to do a flicker effect. So what we're going to do is um, we're gonna we're gonna toggle an internal flag and whenever that flag is off we're going to uh, make the object visible and when it's on we're gonna make it invisible or vice versa it doesn't really matter so click on our light source and we're going to say if the flag is on and that's flag zero uh, we are going to make this 
Under visibility, we're going to select make object reappear, which will make it visible if it's invisible, and it'll do nothing if it already is visible. <clears throat> and then we're going to select uh, flags is flag off. And if the flag is off, we are going to make it invisible. Okay, now we need to toggle that flag, which we're going to do this randomly. So we're going to select under the special objects, there's something called X out of Y at random. We're going to say 1 out of 5, not 1 point, 1 out of 5. And when that happens, we are going to toggle this flag. So now this should flicker pretty good. All right. Not too bad. Uh, okay, so I think we can make this look a little bit better though. We're going to do a smooth transform to expand this whenever it turns back on to make it bloom. So if you don't know about this, uh, we are going to need to use something called a tween effect and I have a tutorial on that. So you should look that up now because that's a little more in depth than this. But um, I'm just going to fill this in real quick without much, much explanation. So I'm going to need some variables on my light source. I'm going to need four variables. We're going to need a X scaler, a Y scaler, <clears throat> a target X scaler, and a target Y scaler. And we're going to set all these to one by default. Okay. Um, all right, so now we need to have a new always event and we are going to transform this always. So first we want to always set the scale, the X scale of our light source to be the value of X scaler. And we want to set, oh, make sure you select one for maximum quality. And we want to do the same uh, thing for the Y. So always set the Y scale to the value of Y scaler. And that's going to be one. Now we need to, tra uh, to transition these smoothly. So we are going to always set the alterable value of X scalar to be the value of X scalar plus the value of target X scalar minus the value of X scalar. And like I said, if you don't understand this, you should watch the tween tutorial it goes no more depth. Uh, X scaler, okay. X scaler, target X scaler. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, then we are going to multiply all this by 0 0.1, which is our modification variable. And we're gonna do the same thing for Y. So we are always going to set the Y scaler to be the value of Y scaler plus target Y scaler. minus, oops, not plus, minus Y scalar times 0 0.1. And let me double check this, make sure everything looks good. Set X scalar to X scalar plus target X scalar minus X scalar 0 0.1. Set Y scalar to Y scalar plus target Y scalar minus Y scalar times 0 0.1. Okay, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is whenever this flag is on, when it's reappearing, we are going to set the uh, alterable value of target X scaler and target Y scaler, which is the, the size that we want this to smoothly transition to. We're gonna set that to one for both of those values. Oops, hold on. Target Y scaler, not Y scaler. Yep. Target X and target Y are both set to one. And whenever it's off, we're going to make it smaller. So we're gonna set the, the target value to um, 0 0.5. So what this is going to do is that whenever it's on, it is going to, uh, it's going to bloom outward. It's going to increase the size smoothly. So it's, it should create a nice sort of, you know, organic flicker effect. Yeah. And see the longer it stays on, the bigger that bloom gets. So. It's a pretty good effect. Now there's all kinds of things you can do with this lighting, with this uh, subtraction lighting. You could have, you know, like, I don't know, uh, a cone-shaped light that like tilts back and forth, whatever. 
there's all, all sorts of things you can do. The you know your imagination is your limit. But uh, this should explain enough for you to be able to extrapolate and make your own lighting system. So I hopefully you guys found this uh, educational, and uh, that uh, that concludes it. So I'm gonna take off. You guys have a good one.